This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil jumped nearly 3% on Wednesday after Russian President Vladimir Putin announced a partial military mobilization, escalating the war in Ukraine and raising concerns of tighter oil and gas supply. Brent crude futures rose $2.26, or 2.5%, to $92.88 a barrel by 1051 GMT. U.S. West Texas Intermediate crude was at $86.09 a barrel, up $2.15, or 2.6%. Putin said he had signed a decree on partial mobilization beginning on Wednesday, saying he was defending Russian territories and that the West wanted to destroy the country. Democratic and Republican senators on Tuesday proposed that U.S. President Joe Biden's administration use secondary sanctions on international banks to strengthen a price cap G7 countries plan to impose on Russian oil over Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. Democratic Senator Chris Van Hollen and Republican Senator Pat Toomey announced a framework for legislation to impose the secondary sanctions, which would target financial institutions involved in trade finance, insurance, reinsurance and brokerage of Russia oil and petroleum products sold at prices exceeding the cap. Both senators are members of the Senate Banking Committee, which oversees sanctions policy. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. Germany nationalised gas importer Uniper on Wednesday and Britain capped wholesale electricity and gas prices for businesses, as Europe splurged cash to keep the lights and heaters on this winter amid an escalating war in Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin added to the energy price pain on Wednesday, sending oil and gas prices higher by announcing a partial military mobilisation. European governments have already earmarked almost 500 billion euros, 496 billion dollars, in the past year to shield citizens and companies from soaring gas and power prices, according to research published by think tank Bruegel. The British government said on Wednesday it would cap wholesale electricity and gas costs for businesses at less than half the market rate from next month, helping relieve the pressure of soaring energy costs but adding to the government's fast-rising spending. Wholesale prices for electricity will be capped at about £211, $239, per megawatt hour, MWH, and for gas at £75 per megawatt hour, compared to forecast market rates of £600 and £180 respectively. We have stepped in to stop businesses collapsing, protect jobs and limit inflation, said Finance Minister Kwasi Kwarteng, who is due to give a fiscal update on Friday. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Gold rose on Wednesday after Russian President Vladimir Putin's partial mobilization announcement reignited some safe haven interest in bullion, although a strong dollar and expected U.S. rate hikes capped gains. Spot gold was up 0.7% at $1,674.79 per ounce by 12.05 GMT. U.S. gold futures rose 0.7% to $1,683. Putin said he had signed a decree on partial mobilization beginning on Wednesday, saying he was defending Russian territories and that the West wanted to destroy the country. The London Metal Exchange said on Wednesday it does not see evidence of metal moving into its warehouses on a long-term basis after Bloomberg News reported that Russia's Rusal was working on a plan to deliver its aluminium to LME facilities. Neither Rusal, nor its metal, is under sanctions imposed on other Russian companies after Moscow's invasion of Ukraine in February, which it calls a special military operation. According to a report on Tuesday by Bloomberg News, which cited unnamed sources, Rusal has discussed shipping some aluminium from Russia's far eastern port of Vladivostok to LME warehouses in Asia. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. India is consider allowing the overseas shipment of some rice cargo stuck at ports after the world's biggest exporter of the grain imposed restrictions earlier this month, a government official said on Wednesday on the condition of anonymity. To boost local supplies and calm prices after below average monsoon rainfall curtailed planting, India banned exports of broken rice and imposed a 20% duty on exports of various other types on September 8. 
at least 20 ships are waiting to load around 600,000 tons of rice at the ports after being trapped for nearly a fortnight, forcing sellers to pay demurrage charges, industry officials told Reuters this week. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.